failure is a part of life. So the faster you're, you become comfortable with that, the faster you'll break all your limits. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. I'm really excited about this week's episode. Today, I'm talking with Brian Lowry. He's a senior graphic designer and digital media specialist out of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we actually met through uh, my uh, mutual friend and my roommate. So um, uh, Brian and I got talking a little bit last week and I followed him on Instagram and saw that Brian has an interest in all sorts of different kinds of mixed mediums. And so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get to know him a little bit better um, and uh, learn more about his craft. So Brian, first, would you mind just telling us uh, more about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. And thank you for having me on your podcast. Uh, Definitely a fun surprise that a conversation could lead to being on a podcast. So, you know, I'm glad that I never know. Yeah. Like, um, so I guess to introduce myself, yes, I'm Brian Lowry. Um, I have been a creative individual since four and in terms of visual creativity, started with drawing. Um, and from there, it just became a, a natural inclination to translate what was going on inside through my hands onto exactly a variety of mediums, because as it started with drawing, it expanded into the computer and beyond once I realized that such technologies existed as I grew up. So, so yes, like there, there is an eclecticism to my interest of visual communications, um, but I'm phoning it into a, to a, a graphic design language and, and problem solving focus. Um, yeah, I, f- I think that's probably something that a lot of artists go through in that they, they have so many interests that they that they like to do. And it's okay to do all of them. But professionally, it's hard to market yourself as all of those things. So you kind of have to niche down into, you know, really the, the medium you want to focus in and then also kind of the industry. So where are you at now um, professionally with that? So gratefully, I am approaching my fourth year in the industry um and specifically the graphic design industry um and at this point you know i'm i have a lot to show for it um and at this point i'm excited to expand and see see what see how how my voice can mature my visual language can mature um as well as um its ability to speak through a multitude of other voices, like client relationships or um, campaigns. So I, I'd say like in a transitionary period of, of outgrowing my shell, outgrowing what, you know, outgrowing the initial foot in the door, so to speak. Um, so uh, what are you doing like day to day? What's your typical day like right now? Um, so right now, my initial, the first half of the day, I run supervisor over a current intern we have with us and run management over a um, order management system I created and implemented within the company to help expedite incoming orders. Uh, this is it, it, like my, my brainchild, so, so I manage it and sustain it. And then on the second half of the day, I proceed to work on the motion media and digital content for the brokers that I currently work for. And so the day is split between like a managerial supervisor role and a specialist role. And so, and then off work, uh, I have my own freelance business as well. I currently took hiatus for that um, to allow myself that space to, to mature my craft, take reflection on the progress thus far in and outside of the office and, you know, bring some clarity to, to, you know, the breadth of the work and, and bring focus to where I would like to pursue it. So, so, so it seems like, um, does being a manager kind of take away from your ability to create, or do you like that part of your job as well? This is admittedly my first time in a managerial role. So it's, it's, it's an adjustment and I, and I, and I think that it does require some 
some ability to let go, relinquish that control and um, what's the word, delegate. Uh, and, you know, even delegation isn't necessarily, it doesn't come natural to probably everybody. There are probably some who it does come natural to. Um, like I like really study Chris Doe and just from studying him, he's very much an entrepreneurial spirit. So it's natural to him to, to have that mind of delegation. Um, for me personally, it's, it is a learning curve. And at the moment, I can't say that I personally am like enthused by it. It's a challenge. It's a healthy challenge. And I'm learning a lot through it. Um, but in learning, I'm also learning that maybe this isn't particularly what I would like to have on my plate uh, as I continue to grow at this phase in life, potentially later on that could change. But at the moment, it's a great experience, but it's also an experience to show me what, what may or may not be my interest at the moment. Um, I don't know if we actually explicitly mentioned it. You're working at a real estate brokerage brokerage. And um, did you have an interest in that particular industry or field prior to working there? Or actually let's go, let's even take it back further. Uh, let's go like through some of the steps of after you got out of or you're in high school, did you know what you want? I know you had an acclimate, uh, you know, an affinity for art, but um, did you go to school for that? Or did you just go right into the workforce? And kind of what were your steps that have gotten you to where you are now? So I'm a 93 kid. So I grew up in the generation where college was, it was the timeline. So you go to high school, you graduate mm -hmm. high school, you go to college, you graduate college, and then you get into the industry, um, whatever that may be. Um, so so that was generally my progress. Um, by the time I reached ninth grade or 10th grade in high school, I was introduced to graphic design in ninth grade. And then in Photoshop grade, first, actually illustrator, Adobe illustrator. Ah, okay. Vector and, design. Yes. And that, that, because I had a illustrative like tendency of drawing to be able to manipulate it to that degree and the, you know, the undo button that changed everything for me. And I was like, wow, like, you know, this, this is a whole nother world. And so, so I dove into it. And then sophomore year, I was introduced to SCAD, um, where one of the recruiters came to our high school, spoke to our graphic design class, did the um, presentation and just the, you know, I was, my chops were just aching to go over there. So, so kind of took the gamble. That was the only college I applied for. And, you know, worked very hard to get as many scholarships as I could to make it a reasonable uh, investment. And, you know, I went to the Atlanta campus, not necessarily the Savannah campus. And from there, it, it was all set in stone. Like, it's just, it chewed me up, but, you know, it didn't spit me out. Cool. So you're, so you're from the Atlanta area? Correct. Okay. And, um, and then after you graduated from SCAD, uh, what was your first big break? How did that happen? So when I graduated from SCAD, I actually graduated in fine art. Um, so I kind of went back to my roots towards the latter half of college um, and worked in printmaking, which is the predecessor to digital graphic design. Um, and that really helped me get my hands into the physicality of design work, you know, Getting, getting my fingers in the, in the pot, so to speak. And unfortunately though, that physicality comes with a risk of injury. And so just before the end of my senior year, I damaged my carpal tunnel and had a tendinosis sprain that resulted in my entire arm going numb if I held a pencil longer than five wow. minutes. So needless to say, I was very panicked at the very end of college and graduating in fine art, you know, there's, there is a industry for that, but it takes time and maturing and the panic of potentially losing my dominant arm kind of set in and I went into the hustle. I went into hustle mode. And what that means is I didn't want to abandon my creative roots, um, my creative truth. I wanted to remain true to what was important to me or brought fulfillment to my day to day. But I was going to use the five years I spent at SCAD to, to leverage that. 
And so, so I just started from scratch. I took all my projects from college and used the, the knowledge that I gained, you know, taught by the end of college to redesign them, revamp them, uh, do research, study the industry, study what I was looking to get into and then apply, 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 you know, get out there, introduce myself, apply. I said it again, but that's how many times I applied. But um, within that year of freelancing, that first year of like boots on the ground freelance, <clears throat> I was able to amass enough of a portfolio to create, you know, a spread, so to speak, to introduce to employers. And within a year, I was able to get my foot in the door and got my first salary position in house. And from there, it's it's continued to mature my skills, my awareness, and my versatility in that visual problem solving. And and this time, you know, in terms of the in-house aspect, with with a multitude of clients, both at the individual and kind of company level. Um, so you're working with agents as well as the the actual brokerage, basically, like based on what their needs are. Fifty fifty. Okay. Um, yeah, I think having the, um, having that injury at such a young age is kind of unique because a lot of people take like their health for granted. And when you realize, wow, without my arm, I'm, you know, I can't do what I love. I can't do what is, um, supposed to, uh, you know, make me money and help me survive. Like that is scary. And, uh, yeah, I think probably most people don't really have an experience like that until later on in life. So does, it gives you some perspective, I'd say. For sure. Uh, 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 how about your portfolio? You mentioned building a portfolio. Did you use like a specific tool? Did you use like a website or a, an online thing? Or did you have um, like just use social media as a portfolio that you would present to people? At that time in my life, social media was creating a lot of anxiety and coupled with the, the stress of the injury and trying to navigate around that, I didn't have the space for that type of anxiety, especially considering it was preventable. All I had to do was just get off social media. So I actually made the decision to, to go on a sabbatical from social media and utilize that time to just direct email. Um, and from my research on YouTube and studying, you know, vocal vocal industry professionals they really all emphasize the power of a direct email you know it's it's social media is definitely a tool to be leveraged but they have made it abundantly clear that direct email is just as powerful if not more and so in terms of the tools i used it was indesign adobe indesign um illustrator photoshop and, and a platform in terms of where to house my work and portfolio was Squarespace. And so, so using those four primarily, those are my main tools to, to develop my portfolio and then present my portfolio. Sure. Yeah. I get people coming to me fairly often. I get cold, cold emails and um, whenever they don't include like a link to if it's for video, a reel, or if it's, uh, web design or graphic design or anything like that. I'm like, how am I supposed to know, you know, how good you are if I can't visually see something? And it's such a it's such a visual industry that yeah, in Squarespace websites are like not super complicated to put together. So I yeah, that's a great a great path. And I yeah, I've had many many of those. Um, did you find that being in an art school? Um, that you learn from your peers? Do you think it's like essential to be surrounded by other creative people to grow? Um, or, you know, is it something you can kind of just do on your own? It's definitely something you can do on your own. Um, but what I will say is the experience that comes with the, the normalization of creative, creative individuals is something that is, is very is a beautiful experience, especially coming out of high school. Um, because speaking only for myself, I came from uh, a place where the arts were kind of second, really tertiary. So 
when I was able to step into this atmosphere and environment where it was celebrated, if not, you know, uh, a, a core tenant, it was freeing. It was very freeing to allow myself that, that curiosity to explore and, and, and not only explore my environment, but yes, explore my peers, explore their interests and, you know, find sounding boards, find individuals who see things with a different perspective while coming at it with a creative eye. So it, it, it is, I think being in a, an artistic environment or a creative environment with fellow creative peers is like, is like being in a microwave. Like it, it excites all of the molecules, the water molecules, so to speak, that heats it up fast, very fast and like kind of abruptly because it's so, it's so concentrated. It's such a, you know, a niche, so to speak. It is, it is a, is a pocket of condensed, concentrated and passionate, you know, to a self-sacrificial degree sometimes, but you know, it's, it's only because it's, it is something that we feel as though we can't live without. So resonating with individuals who have that similar nature is something that I would never have changed for the world. Now, I will say if any school puts you in the hole financially, don't do it. Like pursue scholarships, pursue grants, do the, do the work before the work so that you can, so you can not feel Mm, like burdened by it, burdened by burdened by the desire to pursue an education in a field that you enjoy. Like, I don't personally think that education should become a ball and chain. It's supposed to liberate. So, so I so that's why I say yes and no, and especially now because I've been I've graduated. I think roughly five years now. So the, 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 the field has changed completely. Like there's so many online resources that honestly, like I said, a lot of colleges, especially those specialty colleges can, can really have a high price ticket. And the money that is invested into that schooling nowadays can be invested in a, in a YouTube premium account or a School of Motion account, uh, you know, all of these resources are available for you to, to educate yourself on the industry with full transparency, because in their experience, you know, they had to do the footwork. They had to go find the resources, do the digging, and build it from scratch. So, so everything that they built from scratch is now available. So it's a different ball game now. Um, so that's why I say yes and no. In terms of the novelty of that experience, yes, but in terms of the necessity, no. Uh, you already mentioned Chris Doe, which is if if for those listening that aren't familiar with him, he's a he has a YouTube channel called Future or The Future. I'm not sure which, but but he's awesome and he teaches a lot about not only design but the entrepreneurship side of 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 you know of um being a graphic designer and uh, running an agency. Um, what are some other resources? You mentioned a lot of like online resources. What are some other like either channels you follow or people that inspire you or some websites maybe that you go to to learn some new skills? Mm, honestly, at the time, a lot of my research is reading and like studying magazines, spreads, and kind of just really... There's this book that I read called Steal Like an Artist. And for the longest yeah, time, right you got it. It's, it's, it is it's a game changer for at the personal level because it's, you know, at that time, you know, it's just like, oh, stealing or, you know, imitating or mimicking all that stuff, you know, struck so much fear because I was just like, well, is there a lack of authenticity if I'm, you know, emulating? Do you but, think you need to do something completely unique that like that no one has ever done every single time and you real then you realize it's not possible right because it's and it, and it's such an unrealistic goal to set or weight to set on yourself especially at you know at a young age when you haven't fully experienced life to come up with something 
out of the blue kind of thing. <clears throat> so, so that book in particular really um, highlighted the, the, the importance of just studying those who came before you, studying an eclectic taste, studying, you know, from architecture to fine art. And in terms of a name drop for like fine art, because that's primarily where like the latter of my, my college was spent and kind of helped shape my, my thinking in terms of pulling, pulling, connecting dots that are abstract or, you know, not necessarily linear. I would say like Kandinsky, Wassily Kandinsky, um, his work really resonated with me in terms of allowing your own personal voice to, to evolve and to, and to not really try to contain it, not to judge it, but just to lean into it, allow itself to find its own voice. And through the repetition, through the study of other masters and, and until it just grows into its own um, language, so to speak. And so uh, I will admit though, I'm not an avid reader thus far. And so that is, that is what is coming into this transitionary period. I'm a lot more self-motivated because I'm no longer in a scholastic, you know, a school environment where it was impossible to get away from that. Now it's just, okay, it's based on what I pursue. So a lot of my education was through osmosis back when I was in college, but now it's much more boots on the ground. Yeah, I love it. Uh, speaking of that, um, that transition period and that evolution, what are kind of some of your goals and the things that you're working towards down the road? I want to expand my freelance business um, and increase my price point and the scope of my clientele, as well as the scope of projects and visual problem solving, being like brand and visual identity systems while integrating, you know, my secondary skills, my specialized skills of, you know, motion media, uh, web design and UX and UI for navigating clients, like in terms of what I did with, with my project at work, you know, really getting into that, that research element of kind of anticipating what um, multiple clients or uh, users will, will need and, and, and kind of predicting what will benefit them most. I find that very fun and, and challenging and invigorating um, with the add-on of making it beautiful and functional. So, so I guess a long story short is I like to mature my, my, my visual communication and my branding expertise while enriching it, enriching it with motion media and web design. I remember you specifically mentioned uh, mentioning motion design, motion graphics. What what what's kind of drawing you to that? Uh, and that's kind of in my realm, which is why you know it piques my interest. What do you like about motion design? I've always loved animation. Like maybe the audience won't see, but there's an Adventure Time poster on the wall. So I like cartoons, and I've always loved cartoons. Uh, so I've been very sensitive with just seeing motion and just enjoying the fluidity of it, whether that, whether it was illustrated or through dance, like, because the high school I went to had a dance performance program. So it was very common to see dance performances, whether solo or a group. So the coordination, you know, the intent, the, you know, the follow through, all of those factors were just, because they created a response, elicited an, an emotional response within me, just from as an observer, it I wanted to do the same because so many ideas in my head, daydreams would be this whole production. And then I I translate it into a visual representation, but then it's just like in my head it was moving. I want to make it move. So so that's really what and 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 getting over the fact that I'm not going to be good at it in the beginning. That, that was holding me back for a little bit because I'm very self-critical. 
but I'm realizing that the only way to get great at something is to just start and stick with it. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I love the way your brain works and, um, you're actually almost answering questions I have as I'm getting to them. You're answering them. You mentioned intent and, um, and the innate motion of things when, and you mentioned UX and UI as well, um, which I had a, a, a guest on it is a, a UX researcher, but, um, yeah, when you're, uh, animating text, we know that people read left to right, so we should animate left to right. When we're, I saw the the clock animation, you indicate the passage of time by going through a, a clockwise, which is where the word comes from, motion. If you were to go backwards, counterclockwise, you'd indicate a reverse in time. So you can look at a still, lo- you know, you with your graphic design background, you can look at a still um, logo, for example, and then figure out how it would come to be and reveal itself in a way that is intentional and motivated based on how people act and perceive and then also the motion of the logo or whatever it is you're you're adding motion to that was originally just like a static image so um yeah it's that's what i love about motion and that's what i try and constantly focus on is just what is what am i trying to convey here and what's the intention behind whatever that whatever choice i'm making why does this cut you know at this pre- precise moment and why does it have this color balance or that you know instead of just going well we'll just do this you know not having the intention behind it um makes a difference between in my opinion like uh, something that's effective and connects with people and an art that can feel shallow and just soulless basically is, ha- is that is that intention um, so you're now working as a, um, you're working in a corporate environment, which I've done a couple times, uh, but you also have your side business, your side hustle, uh, which we're actually going to do an episode of the creative truth solely about what it means to hustle. And is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Um, what do you like about being a salaried employee at, or, what do you like about being an entrepreneur and uh, is one better than the other, or is it maybe, is it just based on the type of person you are or what are your thoughts on that subject? So I speaking of intent, like I wanted to go into an in-house role with an intent and my intent was to pay off my student debt uh, while getting my foot in an industry that I didn't, like graduate in, right? So to show to show my chops and to to remove that ball and chain, so to speak. So I'm right there, right with you. Yeah. And so like in terms of what like the challenge of being in an in-house role was the trying to find avenues of creativity. And when I say creativity, I mean like I'm not going to do it verbatim, but in essence, it's like when, when everyone sees the same problem, but you find a solution unique to your experience kind of thing that's effective for the recipient. Um, and so for that sense of creativity in, a, in an in-house role, there's parameters within the in-house role. There's a, a brand that's pre-established. There's a language that's pre-established with a history behind it. So, so to come in and attempt to reinvent the wheel can go left. And so that is the challenge, but I personally enjoy that challenge. One, because it, it again, allowed me security to, to prepare myself and alleviate of myself of this, that ball and chain, while also giving me the space to push the needle forward, to find ways that challenge my eye for detail and challenge my eye for problem solving within a pre-established kind of environment. And I do think it's personality-based. Like um, some individuals have that ability to grow within that sense of parameter um and some feel as though it's 
it can, it, it reaches a ceiling, so to speak, a cap. Um, and I personally feel like it's that, that the preference between the two is up to the individual. Um, but for me, like I enjoyed it because it helped me really get my footing in something that I felt shaky about um, and was able to provide me really a whole day of, you know, education, like client business to client relationships, correspondence, attention to detail, deliverable, asset management. And then, and then once I got the, the formula of the day-to-day down, it was then a matter of, okay, now how do I be creative with this? And so it just really, it, it forced me to like, to, to learn it down to the DNA so that I, I could find ways of evolving it. And thankfully I did. And so, and then after the clock, the freelance business was a lot more, I guess, personal because all of that information that I was practicing, learning and executing throughout the day. Now it's like, okay, let's do that for my own stuff. Let's do that for, you know, when there are no parameters, you know, aside from, you know, the client brief or, um, the scope of what they need uh, for their for their for their request, but it was just the switching the hats. I, I really enjoyed that process of having that kind of safe space to invest in myself, and of course the steady income to invest in tools, to invest in you know my education after school kind of thing. So so there was a sense of safety that it provided. Um, so, so yeah, so I think, I think that's like my summary between the two, uh, but the freelance, in terms of my goal, yes, I would like to expand my freelance goal to have, you know, a higher budget client uh, and greater challenge with each of the, the projects and diversification. Um, you mentioned that you were drawing from a very young age. Do you think that creativity is innate in people or that it's something that can be learned and developed through time? I think creativity is innate in every single human being. Um, And so much so that if someone says they're not creative in my presence, I immediately tell them they are and emphasize why based on an observation I saw in that moment, because I, creativity is a very powerful thing and a freeing thing. And creativity is not isolated to only visual representation. Music is creative. Dance is creative. Architecture, infrastructure, book design, you know, the table your your, your arm is resting on, all of that is creative. The 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 wiring and the the in, uh, engineering that allowed you that microphone to speak into, that's creativity. It's because we had a problem. And we found the solution through, you know, taking things that surrounded us in our environment, like raw materials of earth and whatever, what have you. And we manifested that into something that can conduct electricity, a natural occurring phenomenon that we have been able to capitalize on. So, so yes, humans are innately creative. Um, and it can definitely be matured. Uh, that artistry, that sense of artistry, I think that is born to the individual because it's there, you know, to do one thing you have, you can't, well, not can't, but like to do one thing, you're, you're, you're not doing another. So, so to, to pursue, you know, drawing or illustration or painting or the fine arts, <clears throat> even the digital arts, to pursue that, you have to not pursue so many other things that could involve creativity. So, so, so again, 50, 50 on that, uh, on that question. Um, for you, it's funny you mentioned the table cause I, I have interviewed a furniture maker. I've interviewed a UX designer. I've interviewed writers. I've interviewed musicians, uh, for the podcast. And, uh, so that's exactly what I'm trying to, um, 
accomplished with this podcast. And ultimately, I'm, I'm realizing how much we actually do think alike. So I'd love to collaborate down the road. But, um, but the, another goal of this podcast is to reach out to the Tyler's and Brian's that are 17 and 18 and maybe don't know what they want to do or don't know how to get to where they want to be, you know, 10 years down the road for them. So do you have any advice for people that are maybe just starting out and they want to get into graphic design, motion design, your industry and stuff that'll kind of fast track them. They can maybe avoid some of the mistakes you made along the way. I would say, Get out of your own way and trust yourself. Fail forward. And when I say that, what I mean is failure is a part of life. So the faster you're, you become comfortable with that, the faster you'll break all your limits. Because limits, because to fail is to learn. And when you fail forward, there's a sense of intent. Like, it's like, you can either, you know, fail a test because you didn't study or like you fail. This is a really bad example. So I don't even know if I'm going to finish it, but like, and like, if you fail with an intent, like if let's say like, okay, uh, you know, I wanted to learn branding and identity. So I just dove into a project and you know, starting from what was familiar and reaching something that was unfamiliar, the quality is going to change. Like it'll be a visual drop in the the expertise and in in my nuance of the visual materials. But once it's done, you have that, you have that evidence to then study. That experience is a learning experience and it's happening at the subconscious and conscious level. So getting out of your own way is something that I definitely recommend and just get beside yourself, get behind yourself, push yourself forward because the on, really the only person that could, that can stop you from doing anything in life is you because no matter what, no matter how many no's you get externally, so long as you keep moving forward, keep pursuing, keep evolving and studying and getting back out there, getting back up, you'll get a yes. And then, and then you'll just keep going because it's, it's self-fulfilling. The yeses will get faster and more consistent because, because that individual is consistent. They're consistent with their desire to grow, their ambition to grow, their pursuit, their active intent to, to mature and expand their craft or um, specify their craft. You know, you know, it's the, the discipline and the motivation speaks for itself because it's it's an ongoing process. And oh my goodness, another thing, <laughs> if you're 17 and 18, you have the superpower of youth on your hand. Like I'm only 27. And just thinking about 10 years ago, when I graduated high school, the amount of wear and tear my body could go through and bounce right back is just like, ooh, man, I wish I really utilized all of that just perpetual energy to just go, 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 go. So, so yes, like, you know, you know, we see those rare cases like, like Drake, you know, he was, he was on TV at like 15 or something, but he's, he's a testament to that, you know, utilize that energy, utilize that, that time and, and maximize it, you know, and don't be afraid of, of not being good at something in the beginning because you're so young, your life is literally at the beginning. So, so dive in and just roll with it because at the end of the day, it's very fun because you're doing what you love. It may, you may be uh, like hypercritical of it because you care so much about it, but that's okay. You care about it. So I wouldn't turn that care into you know, criticism, but rather just get comfortable with it. And, and yeah, use that power of youth, man. 
Yeah, we uh, we've talked about in past episodes how it's better to put something out that's, you know, 95% perfect than to yeah. work forever and ever and ever and make it 98% perfect and never put it out there. It's just like, just put it out there, see how the world reacts to it and see how you react to it. Once you, once you step away from it, you might go, oh, okay, that's actually pretty good. Or you can go, well, I didn't like this, that, or the other thing, but I'll, I'll, I'll do better next time. So um, are you open to people connecting with you if they have more questions or want to uh, talk to you more? Absolutely. Okay. Um, now it's kind of a good chance for you to, if you want to plug uh, how people can connect with you, or if you want to plug your, um, your side business, um, how can people find you? Okay. So I should have thought about that a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm actually taking a hiatus from freelance because I signed up for the school of motion. I'm name dropping everybody, but I signed up for the school of motion and it starts, my courses start Monday. So I, I want to give that all of my attention, so to speak, and that, that energy. So, so right now, yes, my freelance is currently on hiatus. Um, but to, to reach out to me, um, my Instagram is Brian Kendall James, B R I A N K E N D A L L James. And my email is of the same title. So Brian Kendall James at gmail.com. I'll drop that below the, in the description as well. Or if you're listening, then it'll be in the podcast description. And um, yeah, and then if anyone, if you also want to leave a comment, I, I'll pass it along to Brian if you have any questions for him or for upcoming uh, episodes with other graphic designers. Um, that's really all I have. Did you want to have, did you have any uh, closing remarks that you would like to leave with the audience before I close out the, the episode? Yeah, honestly, watching you and just studying your Instagram, it's to see that you've now moved into it, expanded into a space is motivating to me because like within the span of like, you know, I only met you like once, but like in that, like I think in a week's or two weeks time, you know, you transitioned, you expanded you. And so that's, that's that perpetual growth kind of thing. I love seeing time move forward one, because it's, it's something to celebrate. And two, because it's, it's like a, a mirror, like, okay, like not in a comparative sense, but in a, in a, it's a microwave. I, yeah. Yes, exactly. It just, it excites me. And so then I, then I move forward and then I, hopefully it excites someone else and, and it's perpetual. Yes, exactly. Cool, man. Uh, well, thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. In upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to discover their path to success. Uh, if you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can send them to me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com, or you can learn more about The Creative Truth or buy a mug or a hat or a shirt or a sweatshirt at creative-truth.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>